Sure. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so we go for follow proficiency education. Right. I, for the record, Jeff Van yeah. Moss and EA. And let me just tee this up a little bit more sure. because it's interesting. And I, I don't think I'm the only one having these conversations, but when I go for coffee in Montpelier and I said this to you, and even today running into a family, proficiency, I keep hearing concerns about proficiency education. We've heard them from some of our members that there are concerns with proficiency education. We're gonna look at it in more detail tomorrow, but the uh, miscellaneous education bill likely has, whether it would get voted out or not, the draft will have something in there about, you know, some kind of study around proficiency education. <clears throat> Should we continue? We see that some states are saying, kind of maybe put on the brakes. Uh, <clears throat> what, what are you hearing more in more detail from your members? Okay, fair enough. <clears throat> That's so, all. Uh, thank you for the introduction, I appreciate yeah. it. Um, so PDGRs, you know, proficiency-based grading requirements, yeah. um, are um, schools that are required to do them. Yeah, um, they are all, required. They, they are, yeah. and, okay. and, and some level, and so not all schools are doing it. Yeah. That receive public money, Yeah, to say it that way. Um, and where it's being done and done well, I think there was a great, um, there's a little bit of a broken record here, there was a fair amount of um, professional development that led up to it. There are some yeah. places where there was less than a lot of PD performed yeah. before it was done. And so people then, whether it be the staff, parents, students, <clears throat> were not as well informed as they could have otherwise been. So I think I think your notion of in, in the miscellaneous bill, uh, education bill, having a study in there of some kind, it's always good to take a look at what you've asked yeah. people to do. Yeah. Uh, and see whether it's working for students primarily. Yeah. Um, what you heard from your constituent and, and one of my members, Megan Morgan Puglisi, when she testified here a few weeks yeah. ago, <clears throat> she mentioned she had to keep two grade books. That's right. Um, and that does not seem wise use of her time or her colleagues' time around the state who are doing that. Um, and in large measure, I think that's because kids who are aspiring to college uh, may, out of state, for example, may encounter schools where they're not so familiar with PBGRs. And it's, they're left, the admissions officers, I guess, admissions staff are left uh, scratching their head, what is this? It's something new, something different. Um, how do I square that with kids from other states where there's an A, B, C kind of a grading system? Uh, it's a different grading system. So that, that is of concern to parents who want their kids to do well. That's maybe what you're hearing in the coffee shop. Uh, want them to go to the best uh, college they can uh, get into and can afford and all those fun discussions that take place as parents uh, will. Um, and if they're seeing or sensing some uh, problem with uh, their child's ability to matriculate at a college that they think they could handle uh, financially and academically, then that's of concern to them. And so I think that's the, what you're hearing. Now, we did poll our members in 2019 about PBGRs, uh, and there's... In how, 2019? Pardon? 2019? It was 2019. Before, the, before COVID. Before COVID, <clears throat> yes, April of 2019. Um, so pre-COVID, and, and fair enough. Um, and things, uh, I don't think I've heard much in the way of improvement or more noise about it. it yeah. Pretty noisy back then. People, and then the pandemic hit, and, you know, there were bigger problems. Probably. Yeah. Um, so, you know, one of the things we, we heard from our members was, um, and I'm happy to share this with you, I, I may tailor it a little bit because some of the stuff is not relevant for this discussion, but uh, three quarters were not involved in the development of, of the plans. So that's, that's a problem, yeah. I would say, right? If you're going to yeah. do something with staff and ask them to do something, you want to make sure they're involved at the, at the ground level and, and get buy-in and, and yeah. intimacy with the, the, the discussion. Um, Half of our members didn't think there was adequate resources to implement the, the, uh, the change. So that was a, a change uh, that they didn't see as resourced well. Um, and a fifth said they re didn't receive adequate, excuse me, a fifth said they received adequate professional development. It means four fifths didn't in some level, in varying degrees of uh, yeah. what you can imagine. Yeah. Um, and uh, half of the members did not receive adequate uh, uh, training in the transition. So it's, it's sort of, you know, you've got the build up and then as we evolve into it, so that there, there's room for improvement, I would say, for those schools that are doing it. Uh, 
and, uh, and Jeff, just to confirm, every school is supposed to be right. I believe that's right. I, I think that know, is. But, yeah, because the college not, council you know, I search. I, there's no. I don't think there's any PDR yeah. police out yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That, yeah. That's that's what I'm. Yeah. I'm being candid with you. That, okay. And I don't believe all the schools, again, who are receiving public tuition dollars, are doing that at all, or are yeah. required to do it. Yeah. And so um, there's a disparity in, in how it's being implemented. Yeah. Like, and, and disparity in how it's uh, rolled out. And I think that it's wise for you, I yeah. suggest in Ms. Lane's book, take a look at that yeah. and see whether it's working for families and students primarily. The other thing, do you have any sense for members around that college time, whether or not, <clears throat> you know, because it's, it's a different grading system, if you've decided to all of a sudden switch to college, I mean, is this causing any problems with admissions? Do you know anything about that? I, you know, that's a little bit out of my belly. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So, uh, I don't know, but what I hear anecdotally is probably what you do is people are concerned about um, is a three on, on my child's report card yeah. equal to a student who's in some other state who's got an A. Yeah. And if you're an admissions officer, how do you equate a three with an A? Or is a three good? Uh, well, you know, it's one, two, three, four. Right. Right. Three is B. Right. The standards, okay. you know, four is doing well above. Okay. Yeah, so do it. <clears throat> how much is, um, if you, I don't know if you can answer this, but how much is the pushback that I sometimes hear against PDGR, just a resistance to change, and how much is actual legitimate uh, concern? And if you can answer that. Yeah, I mean, well, as, as I'll generally and anecdotally say yeah. that people are reluctant to, for change. You yeah. know, change is hard. Uh, I've been doing this for 20 years, and all of a sudden you're going to tell me I'm doing it different. I'm, I was doing it wrong for 20 years. You know, that's, um, and the other uh, notion is uh, that, uh, what, what, you know, to the earlier question, you know, what problem are you trying to solve here? Mm -hmm. Now, the idea was to get flexible pathways to get more kids into uh, places where they could excel and exceed yeah. in, in uh, their expectations and our expectations of them. Um, for that, um, but uh, I, I think that that change is hard for students. Change is hard for families. I mean, I grew up, you know, you get a number of grades. Yeah. Uh, and and so I'm aging myself, dating myself a bit on that. But but we understood where we were, and the kids didn't, as it rolled out. What I heard is that they weren't understanding where they were, relative to their classmates, relative to where they were, and relative to the the uh, curriculum in front of them. And uh, go for it. it. It may take time. Change is hard, and it's often. It, it, but it was designed to not measure. It was designed to measure student success along the road, if you will, and there, it's in, in a constant effort to improve. That's their goal. Is uh, proficiency based uh, learning or evaluations about learning? Are they? Is this a unique? Vermont uh, program, or is this adopted by? Well, other things it is it is out and about in, in the nation, with varying degrees of implementation. Um, I, I think that um, to Senator Kulik's question about change, there are some early adopters, some medium adopters, and some late adopters of change. And uh, I think what we're seeing is some people saying, "Slow down." Naturally, and I think that's what you know, you're naturally hearing some of that. And I think that's that's the noise I hear. Is let's stop, take a look, and see what's going on here. Thank you. Um, can you just give us a sense of how this actually works? Is it you're just tested to over? I mean, that's what some parents say. Yeah, and I, I know, but you represent teachers. I do. Yeah, I do. But I'm not a teacher, so I don't know. You know, this is you're you're digging way to their their actual business of how they work day to day. My understanding is. It gives students more uh, opportunity to um, show mastery in a topic. So it might, might, you might be, of course, in our, you, know, and you might get it right off the bat and, yeah, and, and need no five times additional maybe. work. I, I, on the other hand, might have yeah, only the five or yeah. six or yeah. 10 or 20 yeah. efforts. But in all seriousness, I mean, it, yeah. no, it's, that's helpful. It, it's designed yeah. so if you want a one day assessment, you take a, a one day assessment. Yeah. You're one place, everybody else is a different place. Yeah. Yeah. This is designed to make sure that we're all, we, that everybody in the classroom, assuming we're a classroom just for the sake yeah. of argument here, gets to where the teacher thinks we all need to be. Yeah. 
and we master the subject matter at, at that point. It may take you a week, two weeks, me a lot longer, all those sorts of okay. things. Okay. And that's differentiated instruction, right? Teachers are supposed yeah. to differentiate yeah. their instruction to meet the needs of individual students because we all arrive at the, at the classroom door a little bit differently situated. Yeah. Not Please. easy. No. No. Yeah. But it did go well in some places, I will say that. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and I, I would attribute that to the PD. Yeah. People having a lot of buildup with, yeah. with staff, yeah. with families, with students, so that when they switched, uh, everybody knew what was expected of them. And that's probably a good model for most things that we do yeah. when we make change, whether it's in a classroom or yeah. a work setting or even in this building. Can you just email Hayden a couple of names of schools where you feel like you've heard it's gone really well? Sure. Just so when we do get into it, we can just hear from them as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And potentially the opposite. Yeah, I mean, I can, yeah, we can. We you know, heard from Megan Morgan Lucy, and I would say that I don't think she was, I wasn't here, I didn't hear her and didn't hear your exchange, but I assume she was not thrilled by it. I think, is that right? Nice? I thought you were here. Yeah, you were here that day. I think Colin was. Oh, really? Okay. But yeah, a couple other people but, uh, also. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah. People that right. your members that really are concerned about it. Did you want today's safety? Well, we're going to look at language. We're going to move this in two weeks. We'll have a vote to move it out, and it'll go to a probes. But so sometime in the next couple weeks. Okay. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Make sure copy this uh, redacted a little bit. Cleaned up. Great. Right. Anything else for Mr. Fanning? Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect timing. Oh. Yeah, Hey. <laughs> yeah, thanks. First one stable. Okay. Is Pal? Yes. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? Good. Good to see you in Senate education. I know. It's very exciting. Uh, <laughs> And Ms. Bishop, do you want to both come up at the same time? No. No? Why not? No. Okay, all right. Uh, well, I mean, you could. But... Whatever you want. I have a couple. Why don't you go together? Yeah, okay. If no. that's all right, and then yeah. maybe we can join together. After. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, so welcome to Senate Education. Okay. Yeah, we have your slide okay. presentation. This came out of uh, some questions that we had from the college and universities, and then uh, Senator Weeks was asking some questions about the Vermont brand. And what we're wondering is, uh, with our friends in economic development and appropriations, how are we marketing our, I mean, our interest is, yeah. we'd love for this to be the place to go to college, the state to go to college and stick around, you know? Come and stay in Vermont because you can get the options such a wide range, Middlebury, UVM, Goddard, and everything in between, our state colleges. And so, uh, but related to that, we thought we'd also just try to understand the brand a little bit. I mean, we, we feel it, we live it, but we'd love to get your perspective. And I serve, serve on Senate Ag in the morning, which also talks a lot about the brand as it relates to maple and, mm -hmm. and dairy and, and just the landscape. So any thoughts you have would be greatly appreciated. I would be happy to. Um, and so for the record, my name is Heather Pelham. I am the Commissioner of the Department of Tourism and Marketing. And again, thank you. I don't think I've spoken to this committee before, so it's exciting. Um, I did think, if you don't mind, I thought it would be helpful. You have just a couple of slides in front of you. Um, they're really just visual aids, but I just thought it might be helpful if I could just give you a little bit of context on the Department of Tourism, since I haven't been in the committee before. I think it might be helpful just to ground our conversation as we get further into the brand. So, um, you know, our mission, you know, broadly, well, maybe I should, let me step back one second, since I haven't met you folks before. So I've been the commissioner for about three years. Um, previous to that, I was the chief marketing officer for the state of Vermont. So I've actually been within the Agency of Commerce for 10 years. Um, chief marketing officer is really an interim role that provides marketing expertise and communication support to other state agencies, mm -hmm. whereas the Department of Tourism, it's much more outward facing, promoting the state broadly. So that's where I was just gonna mention that. So the Department of Tourism Marketing, we are looking outside of our borders, promoting the state for visitation, and then also more recently have expanded that role to relocation as well. Um, but in terms of just when it comes to tourism, just so folks know, 
You know, in a typical year, we welcome over 13 million visitors to the state, and that adds up to 3.2 billion in economic activity. So that's just some high level uh, facts for you guys to think about. So that visitor spending supports 10% of our workforce, so over 30,000 Vermonters, um, and that's about, about the same number of jobs as in manufacturing. Um, so again, just for context, that you know, tour zone behind manufacturing is the second larger contributor of out-of-state dollars, um, and bringing in 387 million in tax revenue. And I just say that just again for context in, in terms of the, the industry that we are supporting and the work that it takes to support that industry. Um, so you know, I I guess one other point I would make just to kind of bring on the point is that the visitor economy that we're supporting that reaches all corners of the state. So I like to say that, you know, tourism is rural economic development, you know, because when visitors come here, they're not just staying at our ski resorts or, you know, at the lodge where they may literally be putting their head in the bed, but they're going to our restaurants, they're going to our downtowns, they're, they're buying gas at the, you know, local convenience store. Um, and that really does reach all corners of the state. So in terms of just the unique impact that tourism has and the visitor economy, I would say it can't really be understated. Senator Hewitt. Did, thank you, Chair. Did yep. you say that um, this is the second largest uh, income generator in the state from out of state? Out of state dollars. Out, and what's the first? Manufacturing. Thank you. Unless that's one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> thank um, you. Yeah, so it is, um, I would say, not to be underestimated or, or taken for granted. And I'm, I'm not suggesting that folks do, but it has a huge impact on our state. And again, 10% of our workforce. Senator Meeks um, has a question. Okay, yeah. Uh, what's your budget? Uh, I was going to get to that. Our budget, our base budget is $3.5 million. Okay. Um, so, you know, our role. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the chair of head. <laughs> <Don't worry. laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I'll come back to that. Um, so, you know, our role is to, to promote the state, to, to capture interest. Um, to capture attention and you know create interest to fuel all that economic activity. And so we work at the very top of the marketing funnel. If you folks are thinking about money, you know, we're trying to get people's attention, um, get them interested, inspired, and then they kind of work their way down. Um, but we are not selling any particular product or activity, but we're you know, we're selling the idea of Vermont. Um, and so we focus on broad brand awareness campaigns. Um, to keep filling that funnel with with new visitors and to you know nurture that brand affinity to keep Vermont top of mind for folks, um, and then I would also just make the point that you know we're here to kind of elevate brand experiences um, to a larger audience than any one entity or any one region could do on their own. So we are really taking all of those iconic brand experiences that other regions or other attractions and so forth are creating, and we're trying to get them in front of the largest audience possible. Um, so I would say that when it comes to talking about the Vermont brand, it's important to remember that the brand doesn't come from the top down, it really comes from the bottom up. Um, so that, you know, when visitors come to Vermont, like every interaction they have becomes part of the brand to them. You know, every time you hear Vermont on the news or you see it in a movie or, you know, any friends and family, you know, when they talk about Vermont, all of that, like the brand is that cumulative experience of all of those touch points. It's that sort of residual impression that you have in your head of any product or place. And it comes from all different areas. So I just think it's important for us to remember that when we think about like people's experience with the brand, it's not that necessarily we are in control of that at the state level, yeah. but it's, it's everybody. You know, everybody is responsible for the Vermont brand. It's every interaction that a visitor has when they're here, that becomes part of their collective memory of what Vermont is. Um, but, you know, we, we then nurture that brand affinity and that might start when they're here in college, you know, it might yeah. start when they're visiting friends or family or, or on vacation, clearly. So would you consider one of the bottom up elements to be universities? I would, okay. absolutely. But would it be reflect, currently reflected in your branding efforts? Well, it, in some, no. to some extent, I would propose that it doesn't really matter where that first kernel of an idea comes from. It's really more like, what does that add up in a person's mind? So certainly we would hope that if folks are coming here to college, they have a positive experience, um, obviously positive for their, you know, their career and their personal development, but you know, that they, maybe they, that's one of the reasons why they chose Vermont, hopefully, for outdoor recreation or so forth. And so then we can um, continue to kind of nurture that and hopefully keep them in the pipeline, so to speak. 
But it, to some extent, I would say it doesn't really matter in terms of promoting visitation um, or even relocation. It, it, everything helps. But that first, there's like no wrong door. Think of it that way. Like it's it's if somebody comes here on vacation first, or they come here to college first, or they just come to a wedding here first. You know, it's really then our job just to keep promoting Vermont once they have that first touch point. If that helps to answer the question. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I guess I just wanted to just mention that, you know, we do see that the tourism industry has a really special part in supporting the brand. I mean, good hospitality is about making people feel welcome. It's, you know, sharing what it is that we love about Vermont with everybody else. Um, you know, it's that, it's supporting that tourism infrastructure, um, whether it's, again, it's like our local restaurants or so forth that, you know, when we support that infrastructure, that's supporting kind of the fabric that we all enjoy as well. You know, I like to say that, you know, we want to be able to go out to dinner on a special occasion, you know, well, it takes out-of-state dollars, you know, a lot of times to keep that restaurant operating year-round so it's available when us as residents want to appreciate that asset as well. Um, I did include in the packet, and I don't put the screen up now, but just some example of our creative, just to give you guys, you know, some idea, if, you know, travel certainly kind of sets the tone. Um, and, you know, when we, you know, the current campaign we're running is called A Place All Its Own. Um, and I can just, you know, read you one of our campaign lines is, Vermont is a place unlike any other, where life is better when you slow down, look around, and simply take notice. That Vermont can inspire, restore, and bring you to a whole new state. Um, and so we don't have to, you know, I can talk for hours about yeah. <laughs> creative and tactics and so forth, but I know that's not, but I just wanted to give you a taste of that. And then if you do look at the PDF, there's a link to a video that we um, helped create last summer, which it, I just think it's, you know, it's always easy. You know, other people can say things better than you can sometimes. Um, and it's just a really interesting story about uh, family who was doing this cross country adventure. Um, the father, Keen, is actually from Vermont, so when they came back home, um, just what it meant to come back home and to share the, you know, Vermont experiences that he remembered as a kid with his children and so forth. So, just as a flavor, I just wanted to include that. Um, so then back to the back to the budget, and I'll kind of wrap up here because I know we want to get that as a time and so forth, but um, yes, our base budget is 3.5 million, and that is all in salaries and so forth. So that gives us about $2 million in terms of, you know, kind of working capital for paid advertising in a year. Um, and, you know, tourism is a competitive business. So just, again, for context, um, New Hampshire's budget is 10 million and Maine's is 17 million. Um, and ours again is 3.5, yeah. Um, and, you know, as you can imagine, it costs us the same amount of money to put an ad in Boston as it does for New Hampshire or Maine. So uh, our base funding does keep us at a competitive disadvantage, but we certainly do the best that we can with that. Um, and again, I know we're not talking appropriations here, so there's more No, but you know, we, you know, we're talking with appropriations, and we're talking with economic development folks, and we're talking, and this edu mm -hmm. education, we do, I mean, to be honest, we've got some heavy things going on here, not only with higher ed, but we, there is a bill that would change even school choice in this state dramatically. Mm -hmm. And you know, so all these things really are issues because they're also all economic development issues. And yeah. I mean, in this, you know, you look at the kingdom in particular, you know, why certain people move to certain towns, you know, Jane Kishel might tell you why people move to St. John. I mean, all those things are definitely interconnected. They so are. it is, and we, we're trying to communicate with our colleagues, you know, uh, more effectively, I'd say. We and that's know what we're hearing. Though. Music to my ears, yeah. I and mean, I think that's great. And just understanding, you know, kind of where tourism fits in and how it can fill that role of continuing to tell the yeah. state story in so many different ways. Um, I mean, I mentioned at the beginning, you know, our our charge. I mean, it was always there, but like we have been spending more and more time thinking about relocation and how do we. You know, knowing that folks have this continuum they go through if they think about relocating to a place, it is going to be based on, you know, usually it's based on a, a an affinity that was there that was then nurtured. I mean, some people might just come out of the blue, but more likely they've had some experience in Vermont and they, they want to know what it's all about. Um, we have never had a budget to do that. And so actually in the governor's recommended budget this year, there is a base increase for the Department of Tourism to actually put more money into relocation marketing. So again, thinking about it in the context yeah. of everything you guys are talking about, um, 
we recognize that you know, marketing is all about repetition. It's about touch points, about staying top of mind. It takes money. It takes money over a concerted period of time. Um, and so, you know, we, you know, relocation, workforce, all these things, it is so important. And so let's, what I try to say is like, I can show you what we've done for tourism. We've spent generations investing in tourism, yeah. you know, and it, it takes time to, to create that, like, again, that residual idea of folks' mind. And if we want to expand that to relocation, we're, we're all in, like, we would love to do that, but it takes time and it takes resources. And, you know, the reason why someone comes here on vacation is not necessarily the same reason they come here to relocate. There might be parts of it, but it's, it's different. It's potentially a different audience. It's maybe different tactics. It's yeah. not like you can just add more one, one more thing on, but you know, our higher education system, our education system in general, yes, that is part of our story. That is part of what we have to offer. That's part of the quality of life that we, you know, are promoted to folks. Um, but how we talk about that and how broadly we can talk about that, it, it is a resource driven conversation. Not that to say everything comes yeah. to Yeah, and just, just to give you an example, yeah. uh, everywhere you go in the city of Boston, in a lot of cities in the United States, you see a Southern New Hampshire University sign. Yeah. Their budget is, I think, I mean, it is millions yeah. just for marketing. Yeah. And I think our state colleges have like, you know, 80,000. I, I, you know, it, it's that kind of just difference. It's it's huge. So, um, Senator uh, Gulick. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. We are working on a construction, a school construction bill, because one of our thoughts is that if we can redo our school buildings across the state and really form an incredibly strong and robust public school system, it will really draw people in to live and work here which i know is different from tourism but in terms of bringing people in and keeping them that's what we're hoping for and, and i was i i think it's wonderful and i will also say that you know one of the best forms of marketing is to improve the product so right. you're improving the product that's wonderful but if nobody knows that right. then you're just right. not you're just not doing as much as you right. need to to get to that final end point right once um, we start the building, we will make sure that we have a social media campaign that <laughs> talks yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still trying to get over the shock of, of your budget, <laughs> given what we, what, 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 we, what we spent on our congressperson's uh, recent campaign and Let's Grow Kids campaign. It's yeah. just, you know, it just pales in comparison. Anyway, uh, my question. <laughs> still make an amendment for the DA. Want to. Oh, I think we're already 90 million yeah. over where we are. Well, I would be I would be remiss in not mentioning that um, coming out of the pandemic, there was a part of ARPA funding that was specific to travel tours and outdoor recreation. Um, so the state is getting uh, a big number, $10 million to support travel tours and outdoor recreation in the next few years. For marketing or for? We can use it for marketing. We cannot use it for relocation. Um, so that's one reason why we're not coming asking for an increase in tourism funding as we have done many years before. Um, so it gives us an opportunity to really show what we can do when we have a budget because you know we know those sort of chicken and egg conversations like what would you do? How would you like can show you this is what we can do. This is how the science of marketing works. You know, this is how we can set metrics and benchmarks and really show that return on investment. Um, so the conversation may not be today about tourism funding, but it is never going to go away and there's never, it's never too soon to start that conversation, really think about what does it, what will it take for us to really nurture this industry that is bringing in so much revenue that then is available to this body to fund other initiatives. Yeah. 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 Spend money to make money. Yeah. So my question, yeah. uh, what platforms are you on in your campaign? We have a huge, a huge mix, I would say. So those are just a couple examples of digital advertising. So digital advertising is, you know, banner ads that pop up when you're doing everything else you're doing online, you know, search it, search marketing, you type into Google, I'm interested in this, social media, um, you know, when we can, we do ad Social media. What, what, social media just like, being, what, so we what? think of it, so when you, I was Sarah Weeks is on TikTok, for example. Could he? <laughs> <laughs> So I think social media is both um, just keeping a presence there. So we talk about 
earned, owned, and paid media. So owned media is the things that we say about ourselves. So that would be on social media, okay. that would be our website, and so right. that's where we control the message. Earned media is what other people say about us. So we're also want to nurture PR and you know make sure that we're you know bringing journalists here and things like that. And then there's paid media, which is we pay people to say things about us. So when it comes to social media, it's both earned, excuse me, both owned is what we're saying. You know, we're keeping a good presence out there. We're we're spreading our message, you know, officially and otherwise. And then you know we could also like boost that message to reach a greater audience. Um, so within paid tactics, social yeah. media is part of paid. You know, we also do you know video pre-roll, connected TV, those kind of paid advertising. You know, I mean, print is not dead. Regional travel publications and then online travel platforms. Um, you know, when we have a budget, we do do out of home. We were able to do a campaign this summer in the New York City market that was um, partially to promote uh, tourism and also partially to promote the new line extension of the Amtrak train to Burlington. Um, and you know, we have done some. The New York market is a great one for us because we're not competing as heavily with Boston um, because we're just that much, new, we're closer from New York. Um, so it's just a great way for us to make an impression. Um, and I just, I just throw that in there. I would say another really big part of what we do is sponsored content. So what that is is that we work with other publishers to write stories about us. So for instance, this last summer we worked with Outside Magazine and their family brands includes Backpacker, Queen Eating, right. Yoga Journal, and so forth. So, you know, we're working with other publishers to create stories about them all. That's all. Okay. Ms. Bishop, you want to come on up and you can stay in this column, whatever you want to yeah. do. Yeah. Whatever. Heather and I work quite a bit together, so that's fine. Center group. Um, Betsy Bishop, I'm with the Vermont Chamber of Commerce. Good to meet some of you. I haven't had the opportunity and some old faces that I uh, enjoy working with. So thanks for having us. Um, you know, this is, it's an interesting conversation thinking about tourism marketing, thinking about the small budget. Um, I'm gonna start, uh, th th there's so much to talk about here, but let's, I, I'm gonna try to turn the conversation from the tourism space more to the space around workforce and bringing people to live and work here, to go to college here. Uh, at the beginning of the session, you all received an email from us with our top three priorities, and I'm sure along with everybody else's, you read them and committed them to memory. Um, <laughs> just as a refresher, in case you didn't, um, you know, our top priority is housing, uh, workforce, and advancing Vermont's economy. Those are the three things that we're working on, probably forever, <laughs> not just this year. Um, but around the workforce piece, you know, you all have heard the demographic story of Vermont that we have an aging population that due to the pandemic, we have seen a huge increase in the amount of folks not participating in the workforce in Vermont and that we have a huge workforce problem here. Usually when I say that to any group of people, somebody's hand shoots up and says, you know what we should do? If we could just keep more of our college kids here, it would solve the problem, right? And this is where this attaches to this conversation that you're having. Um, that myth has been dispelled. There are not enough college students in this state to fix the workforce gap, even if you forced all of them to stay. Mm -hmm. About half of them stay. Even if the other half stay, it, it's, no, it's only 5,000. The other half is only 5,000. So it's just not gonna fix our workforce problems. Mm -hmm. Having said that, I don't think anybody really wants to force anybody to do anything in that, in that realm. You know, so, we have, we have these discussions frequently. How do we market all the good things that we're doing in Vermont? And we think about that in the tourism space because tourism is the only place the state is putting marketing dollars into in a significant amount of money and sustained long-term commitment to show the results that Commissioner Pelham just talked about. Um, the budget, three and a half million, is paltry. Um, the amount of employees you have is seven, eight, nine. Or more, maybe. We actually have 12, but it includes the CMO's office. So, so 12 employees to do that work. Um, to think about a sustained effort for attracting people to come here to live and work, that's what we're talking about. Come here to live for four years in college, come here to live here. It, for all the things that we need to do, we think that 
doing that in a, mon you know, yes, going to the Appropriations Committee and asking them for money this year, next year, and every other year for eternity. If we're talking about making a reputation for Vermont as a great place to live because we have a great public school system, you can spend all the money you want on that. You can have all the, the beautiful schools you want, but if you don't tell a single soul, they will never know. And you will be sitting here wondering, why did we spend all that money thinking people were going to flock here? I am in a conversation in almost every committee in this, in this building about this. You know, Betsy, we just passed an aspirational goal on childcare last year to have this 10%, so nobody spends more than 10%. In the lead up to that conversation, the conversation was, if we pass that, people will flock here because of that. My answer is not if you don't tell them, they're not gonna flock here. We've done some amazing things to work on climate change in this building. That we have set goals, we are working toward goals. Vermont is a leader in that space. We're a leader in um, social justice, in environmental uh, work ethic. Um, we're a leader in all of these spaces. And we talk really a lot about it amongst ourselves, and we love it, that's why we're here. But we're not doing a good job of telling other people. It takes money and long-term commitment. Um, so we have asked for to start to think about adding to the Department of Tourism and Marketing's budget a million dollars to try to work on that. Because if we just ask the Department of Tourism to dilute their message and talk about childcare and climate change and colleges and, and anything else, it, it, it won't work. That's not what building a brand is. We need to build a brand to have Vermont be a place that people want to come to not just for four days, not just for a long weekend, but for a lifetime. And we saw a little spark of that, right? During the pandemic, we saw some of that. We need to think about bringing more people here, people overall, but spe specifically people who want to work in our workforce for all of those things. Thank you. That's good being here. Um, and thank you, Chair. Uh, what was my question going to be? Um, it's coming back to me. Um, rankings. We do well on a lot of rankings, it seems, or, or we have in the past. I know right now we're on some rankings that aren't very good, but do you find that that is a good way of telling our story or getting our message out? You know, if we were to commit dollars and a commitment to it, I have no doubt that some marketing genius maybe that would be Commissioner Pelham and her team, <laughs> would be able to figure out what would be the most compelling story to do the things that we want to do. Um, you know, rankings are funny. I can find as many rankings that say bad things about us as yeah. I can that say good things. Okay. Um, I'm fond of thinking that we're the healthiest state and the smartest mm -hmm. state, and you know, all, all these things. Mm -hmm. I'm sure somebody can, can do that and find bad rankings. You know, if you're thinking about what makes a person move from point A to point B, it doesn't happen by seeing one thing and going, ah. Go anywhere outside of the state and ask people, tell people you're from Vermont, what do they say? Beer? Maple. Maple. Skiing? Progressive. Cheese? <laughs> Bernie Sanders, yeah. like the, the, this is because this is years in the making, and yeah. this is our brand. These are all things we want to embrace. Yeah, they're all good things, but what you rarely hear is a work opportunity, or yeah. you know the, those types of things. And in order to put that on somebody's radar, it's going to take an effort mm -hmm. to do that. And I think that we have those achievements. You, you folks who work in this, this building and pass laws every year to do good things for Vermonters, if we could only take your achievements and elevate them to a place where people outside of this state would know that, I think that's a worthy goal. Um, and I think that there's, there's an opportunity to do that. And I do think that it would be a compliment to our tourism message. It's not like these things are different. The audiences are slightly different. How many of you have, have met a, a tourist or had a guest stay at your house or or whatever, and they're like, oh, I love it here, right? It was so cute. And then they often say, like, what are these, what do people do here? Right? That's always like, 
once that's where you want to capture them they came here they had a good experience here they think like could i live there like haven't we all traveled and thought thought that right i come home to vermont so i i can't possibly think that but the, the point is that you we don't have an answer for them whether that's a tourist or somebody who spent four years at college and maybe they left after college and went somewhere but they still sort of have that heartstring for vermont how do we pluck on that and say since you left since you have this root in vermont you know maybe that's a summer camp route maybe it's a college route there's lots of different things people move it takes it takes a huge effort. They're not just flinging up and moving and moving and moving. It's a big effort. It takes time and thought. They move for family, number one, some sort of root or connection. They do move for climate, but like warmth, not climate change. Although that may be changing. Um, they do look for an affordable place to live, um, but they also want to be in a place that they feel um, sort of that camaraderie. What did you say, uh, Commissioner Pelham? Her line, she was reading her line from the, from the PowerPoint and said it's a whole new state. It sort of leads you to think like a whole new state of mind, but a whole new state. That could sort of be very complementary into the space to recruit people, to let people know that Vermont wants more people. We need more people to build houses. Uh, we need more people to go to college. Incredible. We need more people yeah. to join in climate solutions. But we Teach have to. Our kids. We, we need uh, the, the, in the workforce. Yeah. But we need to tell them yeah. that we want them here. Yeah. Senator Weeks. Well, I just had a question going back to tourism for a second. Yeah. I don't want to jump. So I'm just wondering if the Department of Tourism maintains a metric of. I'm thinking of it as like a saturation point of hotels. Uh, theaters, uh, restaurants, resorts, like, do we, do we track like how saturated we are each year on, on uh, tourists coming in and, and, uh, and occupying all those available spaces, all those available opportunities? Is that something that's... You know, I would it? say there is data available for, for instance, the lodging industry. We can get, you know, occupancy rates and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, not, not that you could, but that you do. Well, I'm just curious. I guess I'm answering that saying that there's not that kind of data available okay. in terms of like how, you know, how full is any restaurant, let alone all the restaurants and let alone how that translates up to us. We just don't have those mechanisms in place. Okay. So, um, sure. you know, we have anecdotal information. We, can, you know, we work with up the community level all the time to understand, you know, what's new, what's coming, places opening, places closing, closing. But, um, you know, when we're looking at metrics, we're really trying to make sure that we are spending the dollars that we have very wisely. So looking at, you know, return on investment that way. You know, we're looking at just the marketing metrics, like how many people are we reaching? You know, how long do they, how much time do they spend with the brand? You know, when I mentioned the sponsored content, you know, a, a display ad may flash on your screen if you even look at it for a second or two. But if you're reading an article and it took you five minutes to read that article, we've captured your attention. I mean, you're thinking about Vermont for, you know, five plus minutes. That's a lot of time to make an impression. So. Okay. And there is, um, on the, um, certainly in the lodging industry, we've seen uh, quite a few um, building starts in lodging in Chittenden County. And each one of those, they do an effort of looking at sort of their competitors and that, um, that occupancy rate. Uh, and uh, it's, it's a pretty high occupancy rate. So I think that that's uh, something that certainly the lodging industry is quite quite knowledgeable about okay, and they do share that. Can we get you back? Anytime. I just, yeah, that would be great. We Anytime. would love to continue this. Yeah. We're going to put some language like in the miscellaneous education bill related to marketing and we'll talk to Senator Kitchell and Senators, uh, Senator Ron Pinsdale about this. Sure. One thought is um, uh, over the last two years, three years now with COVID, there was a uh, funds being put in various places to help businesses certainly in the first year or two when they were closed right yeah and most of those funds have been um sent out to the various eligible um businesses to the extent that there's any funds left over in those business programs we have been asking that it gets redeployed to business programs <laughs> as opposed to redeployed to other needs okay. in state government 
Um, and I think we're starting to see that come out again. And if that happens, finding $1 million from those unused business funds, this would, in our view, look at that as helping businesses to find more people, more workers. Just a uh, uh, just an aside, uh, if manufacturing is number one and tourism is number two, where would higher education be? Is that, is that? <laughs> no? Susan's gonna know more than I am. <laughs> I think we're third. Do you? Yeah, yeah. Nice. we're third uh, highest in Okay, state. well there you go, there's a synergy yeah. to yeah. get you know, it's not yeah. marketing support. For I think I, I think I'd have to look at that. I'd love to get back to you. It may be that uh, the tech industry seems to cut through lots of those industries as well. So there's um, there's a, a there's a lot of folks when you look at that. But one third of you know, when you think about the thirty thousand people working in tourism or the 30,000 people working in manufacturing. That's, uh, I don't know those numbers. And, so and actually, right. you were talking about bringing in out-of-state dollars. Right. Yeah, and, that, was, yeah, so, and that's not what I was referring right. to. Right, yeah. so there's different metrics, yeah. right? Like how many people okay, work right. in the industry? How many out-of-state yeah. dollars are brought in? And I think yeah. that's right, so that's the... Okay. Whatever, whatever is necessary yeah. to cure apples, apples, apples. Got it. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just, as we're concluding the conversation, I just want to throw the point out there that you know, when the very first time I came to Vermont was, you know, we were traveling through the state, making a few stops, but mm -hmm. spending the day, or two days actually, in Burlington and at UVM, um, going around the town and then on our way back down, stopping in a few different places. But you know, after going to UVM and spending some time there, uh, just visiting people and then checking out the rest of the state on the way back, um, it, it there was this moment in my mind where I was like, all right. I don't know how, I'm gonna, but I'm going to find a way to yes. end up in Vermont. That's so. great. Right. That's I think really great. That yeah. is exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. You've got that, like, yeah. I, I love it. You you established that route. And how do we get, you know, when you think about the 13 million visitors that come here every year, I know without asking and surveying every single one of them, they had this great experience yeah. here. I could and see so Senator Hashim in a commercial <laughs> <laughs> saying I'm, just I'm that her. message. <laughs> Right. It's perfect. But I, I think my point is like that, that you, you given them the root of that, and yeah. the touch of that with tourism, how do you turn that and capitalize that and turning them into a Vermonter yeah. and letting them know that we want them to be more than just a tourist. We're not telling them that we should. We have to leave it there, I'm afraid. Right. That, Thank that you I so much. To corner office. I think and I'd love for you to walk me to the corner office to talk a little bit more about sure. that. Sure. Okay. Think towards us, you're sampling the product. Thanks. Right? Yeah. 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 Yeah.